Hi, good afternoon, Hi. Rajan. Yes. I have a few questions. Yeah. Please. See, uh, when you are saying about circular economy, uh, this uh, recycling is one of the category, right? Correct. Which yeah. you have mentioned in one of your slides. So, if that is the case, uh, can you uh, say whether polyethylene, polystyrene are sustainable or not? Uh, see, uh, so this is the time I think we should discuss the question. Uh, I, I had kept you waiting for, for yesterday in the first lecture. So when we are talking that uh, recycling is sustainable, yes, it is sustainable. Uh, but when we look at the overall footprint of carbon uh, that we have, because the starting material again is from fossil resources. And when we are talking about fossil resources, we are talking about, so it is going to come in the next lecture, but we are talking about uh, very old carbon, right? We are not talking about new carbon. So the radioactivity of the carbon is going to be nothing if it is very old in nature. So when we measure the carbon footprint of fossil based, uh, you know, polymers like polyethylene terephthalate or polypropylene or polyethylene in particular, you would find that uh, they still add on more carbon to the atmosphere when we compare it with the sustainable counterparts, which are bio-based and bio-derived in nature. But the problem remains uh, why we why we don't look at it from a sustainable forefront is that the, the, the circular economy is not implemented in particular. So let's say I'm using 100 kgs of uh, polyethylene across India. The whole of 100 uh, kgs is not coming back into the loop. Right. And that is where the question mark comes on the sustainability aspect, because when we are saying that it is circular, it has to come back into the loop and uh, the toss, the thought of sustainability there goes for a toss. So even if you look at the carbon content and uh, you when you look at and measure the bio-based content of it, uh, fossil-based polyethylene is not going to have even 1% of bio-based uh, carbon in it. So that is where you would find that sustainability quotient actually goes down for fossil-based polymers when we compare it with bio-based polymers in particular. So what happens to the carbon which is uh, lying in uh, fossil-based uh, polyethylenes after you are uh, using it? What happens to the carbon? I didn't get your question. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't disappear, right? It is It is just a material. It is going to be converted into another form. Yes, true. So ideally, so, it is not going to be lost. Yeah. So you would find that uh, we, we look at the principle of energy conversion from one form to another. And uh, we have seen the, if we are look at, looking at this uh, circular uh, circularity of nature as well, uh, the carbon dioxide that we are looking at are, is utilized by plants, right? along with photosynthesis and that gets converted into uh, this new carbon that is highly radioactive and it will show a good radioactivity in particular, right? So it gets converted in that sense and there may be other activities like a lot of, a lot of scientists are working on carbon sequestration as well and uh, they are trying to harness carbon. In fact, it is one of the methodologies. So people across the globe are converting carbon into uh, polymeric uh, raw materials as well. So something like a glycol and there are a couple of companies who have already commercialized their products. So PU is coming from uh, this bio-based carbon source. So carbon dioxide is basically being used. And that is where we can, you know, term this carbon sequester sequestered product as a bio-product. Uh, indifferent to the normal uh, the polyols which are used for making polyurethane. So ideally polyethylene is sustainable, right? Uh, again, uh, the, it would depend on, uh, you know, what, what sources it has been procured from. So fossil based uh, polyethylene, uh, as per the, uh, the, the calculations that I'll show you in the coming slides, you would find that uh, the carbon, when it is coming from fossil based resources, it is not going to be sustainable in nature. But if it is starting from uh, the, the bio-based source that I told you yesterday, it is going to certainly have a bio-based content and that is going to make it more sustainable in particular. So, what is the criteria of sustainability? Yeah, so that is coming up in the slides, in the lecture coming ahead. Okay, uh, you are saying that uh, biopolymers are having a very low carbon footprint. Yes. But there are various stages of processing in uh, uh, biopolymers as you have seen, as you have shown it. So, each and every stage will again impart you the same carbon footprint, right? When you add, as you said yesterday, the same carbon footprint is going to happen. A transportation is going to be there. Processing, you are adding one more stage, drying, pre-drying. After processing, you are giving some treatments. So how, how efficient this carbon footprint is and how to compare it? 
See the largest carbon that you are reducing when you are comparing fossil based polymers with bio based polymers is the synthesis stage itself. And uh, again, there are some statistics that I am going to show where you look at, uh, you know, the larger part of carbon is coming into picture when we are talking about synthesis and there is the conversion that is processing is a very low part of carbon. And anyways, logistics is going to remain even for fossil based polymer and even for bio based polymer. So that is not going to change. But then the larger footprint is due to the material itself that is going to reduce by much amount. That is what I was trying to say. Achha. Okay. Uh, see, uh... You said that uh, biopolymers are are uh, are biodegradable polymers are there, right? Uh, most okay. Of the times, most of the times you are using like polymers and plastics. So I would like to understand the difference between those. Oh, I'm I'm really sorry. So that uh, I'm using it in synonymous uh, terminology. So if I'm using plastics, it is uh, meaning one and the same. Okay. See. Yeah. Uh, one more question is that, uh, see, you are using a biopolymer, right? You said that it is going to degrade within some particular time frame. Okay. So when you are doing a processing, how does that property of that polymer uh, gets affected? See, for uh, for example, you are using a car bumper. Yeah, yeah, dashboard. So you have some definite period you wanted to survive. If I'm using a biopolymer, how far it is going to survive? If I'm doing a processing, already it has started to decompose. Uh, see, when we are talking about materials which are uh, which have to be durable in life, right? The, the real challenge is with single-use plastics. And that can be really made uh, to, you know, give away in 90 days as the biopolymers give away. And that is why these standards are majorly tailor-made to single-use plastics. But for example, the, the example that you're giving here, giving here is that of a dashboard, which is expected to have, let's say, a 10-year life. It will not be very feasible to use a bioplastic there. Ha, what you can do is you can use something which can be, you know, sort of, let's say, and there have been examples where automotives uses uh, bio-based fibers in particular, right? So what you are doing is you are, let's say, reducing something like a glass fiber and talc and replacing it by something which is bio-based in nature. But then we may not look at it from that perspective because the part is designed itself to last for a longer time frame. So bio materials there at this point in time, the bio materials that are there may not be very feasible to be used. Okay. Uh, see, uh, the other other thing when we are speaking about this extraction of uh, pigments, how stable is that in thermal conditions? Or it has to be only feasible to use only in biopolymers alone. No, 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 no. It can be used with anything. Uh, I mean, uh, ideally, uh, what you are saying is right. Uh, the stability of the pigments have to be really looked at uh, based on the chemical processes that have been used in extracting those pigments. But uh, you can use it for different materials. Uh, more so for biopolymers, it will give you a very synonymous or maybe a synergistic effect that you will have with the real material that it was in something like a flower or a fruit or a vegetable. So it would give a very resembling effect in that case when we are putting it into an active packaging in particular. But it would give a, a similar effect even if you are using conventional plastics in particular. So these active packagings are actually in place. I'm not sure about uh, uh, these pigments extracted from food waste or vegetative waste, but then they are in place. And these uh, TPH sensitive or temperature sensitive and aging uh, aging sensitive packaging are already there in the market. Yeah, uh, you have shown some composites, fiber, you are extracting a fiber and I mean, there are some opportunities which you have shown. When we are using a bio, bio fiber and when you are going for a comp preparing a composite, whether that is a you whether that one you will call it as a biopolymer or bioplastics or it is a, again a non sustainable material so you are saying if let's say i use rice husk with uh, something like polylactic acid that uh, no if you use uh, rice husk with the uh, uh, epoxy or pu bio based pu something okay. like that Okay, so so what is your question in that regard? Whether whether that is sustainable or not? See, uh, again, sustainability has to be really looked at in a lot of different aspects. So when I'm replacing something which was extracted, uh, 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 not from a plant origin, and I'm replacing it with something which is which I have sort of extracted from the plant origin, 
I would say that I am moving in the right direction when I'm talking about sustainability, right? So although the product itself as a whole may not degrade, but I am putting less pressure on the natural resources. Well, let's say I, I replace glass fiber, for example. So the, the pressure that has been put on the natural resources to extract glass or silica, that has reduced because now I am I'm using something which is much more renewable in nature. Right. So I would say that we are going in the right direction, but itself the product may not be termed as sustainable. But uh, we, we are thinking in the direction of sustainability uh, with the changes that we are doing in the product. Yeah. Uh, last one more doubt. Uh, you have shown me that the standards, right? Correct. Is that a certification or is just a standard for testing? No, the, they were the standards which were employed for testing, which will give you the guidelines of what you need to follow. Let's say if you have to have a recycling infrastructure and if you are saying that uh, your product is in line with this standard, so this is, the, this is the infrastructure that, so for separation, for sorting, you need to do this, you need to use this, uh, an overband magnet or something like that. So these are standards pertaining to that. It's not a product certification, right? No, these are not product certifications. The one that we saw yesterday are related to product certifications. What if you want to say your product is biocompostable or maybe uh, it, it is okay to compost it. So they were related to the certifications that you achieve for the product in particular. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.